Hey everyone, in this video, I am going to show you how to pivot your business. So if you have an Etsy shop, an Amazon shop, and you notice over the last few months, year, whatever, that you are no longer making the sales you used to, okay? Your business is taking a dive and you're like, okay, my product line is not working anymore. Um, and you did your due diligence to see that, you know, you're doing your SEO right, your photo is right, like, creating good products, et cetera, but you're just in a business um, within a product line that doesn't just do well anymore. Maybe because of the economy, people don't buy your product anymore, et cetera. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to pivot your business. And what that essentially means is you could change your product line. I'm gonna show you the, the smartest way to do it and how to start making money again, okay? But this is the smart way to do it. I'm gonna do this in a three-part series because it's too much to digest. This is part one. I'm going to share my screen and just get started. Okay. Um, let's see here. Share a screen. All right. So um, let's go directly to Etsy.com. Okay. So there's my face. All right. So the first thing you're going to do is understand that while you want to change your product line, it's probably smart to start doing a product line that uses your current materials. If you're a print on demand business, don't worry, I have something for you as well, so hang tight. But I'm a stationary company. I sell things that require paper and envelopes. So I have a lot of paper and envelopes and printers in my workplace here, okay? You may have something different, okay? You want to try to create a product line that still uses the same materials. Why? One, because you probably still have it laying around. Two, because you're very familiar with it. That's the biggest thing. I have no problem with you changing your product line completely. What I'm teaching you today, you could still do for other types. And I'll show you that toward the end of this video, as well as the print on demand people. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to first search for your product type in the most general way you can search for it. So imagine you are selling t-shirts okay so you're gonna write shirts or t-shirts okay i don't know whatever you sell okay what you're trying to find is what else can i create that uses shirts or for you what else can i create that uses mugs and tumblers and whatever i have laying around okay you're searching for other product types if you are like okay what else can i create with shirts besides shirts you know um, well, they're shirts. So they're, they're in this final form. You could use it as is, but you're obviously putting designs on it. Okay. So yours is different. Um, so you would just search for the product type. And so sometimes there are different words for your product type. For me, I sell stationery, but it's also called note cards. It's also called greeting cards. You could use the material paper and envelopes for many different things. You have to use your brain and say, what else can I use this for? Okay. If you don't know what else to use it for, then I'd recommend um, going into the browse categories and searching that way. So you would hover over and say, okay, I sell shirts. I wanna use shirts for another product line because I'm trying to pivot my business into something that actually sells. Let me go in and browse. So I'm in jewelry and accessories. And obviously if you look, nothing here that I'm aware of, will use shirts. You go to the next one, clothing and shoes. Obviously there's probably gonna be a lot of things in here. And women's, you have dresses, tops, tees. So tops and tees is probably one. Um, sweaters is not quite, unless you do sell sweaters. Costumes, possibly look at it, look at it, but um, hoodies and sweatshirts, et cetera. Okay. So for a person that sells something, you wanna find the material type, see what, people could be searching for, write it in. So shirts, for me, it was note cards. It was, you know, greeting cards. It was invitations, like, right? So I'll just put in search and then we hit a search. And so now you see there's a whole bunch. For you, if you're selling shirts, you have to say to yourself, okay, I'm currently selling shirts that are um, funny meme sayings. I don't know, I'm just making this up. However, that's no longer working anymore. Maybe my um, category is saturated. Maybe everybody and their mother could do it because of print on demand nowadays, like everybody's being able to do it. So I need to think of a different 
approach with my charts. What else can I do? Your goal is to find the different types now that you could create. The best thing to really do is um, to locate bestsellers and take it from there. So I hit control F if you're on a keyboard, if you're on a keyboard, if you're on Windows and type in bestseller one word. And right now this is highlighted. So you could see that this one is raising a wildflower, wildflower mama. You could open this up in a new tab. Um, let's go to the next bestseller. <clears throat> Where'd it go? Oh, it's down here. This one is, no, my first name ain't baby. Okay. Anyway, um, you would go page by page because right now I'm just searching search shirts in general. It's only two bestsellers on the first page. That's actually very alarming. Okay. Your goal is to find what other categories of shirts you could go into. Okay. That's essentially the goal. You're like, you know what? My funny meme culture shirts are dead. I need to start making money. I'm losing money. What else can I get into? You can do a whole bunch of different type of things with shirts, okay? So over here, you could open this in a separate tab. You could open this one in a separate tab, et cetera, and so forth. And you could go and say manually to each one and say, okay, what is about this that are people searching for that's making it a bestseller? Assuming this person has not used social media to to get people to the listing. We don't know if they did, by the way, but this one has a, has a lot to do with raising a wildflower. Maybe raising a wildflower is a phrase people search for. So you would put this in, raising a, oh, look, look at that, guys. Look what I just did. See, this is the process. First of all, raising a wildflower is a thing, okay? You see that. Love it, right? People searching for it. <clears throat> and what is that? That's like, oh, it's like a mom and daughter shirt, okay. But raising a, and it might be trademark, so you have to do your own due diligence, but is a whole search phrase. Okay, so write that down. Again, you have to do your, your research still. Next, <clears throat> if you look at the next one, it says, no, my first name ain't baby together. Again, crop t-shirt. This is a crop shirt. I don't get it. Hold on. No, my first name ain't baby. Oh, okay, so it's just like, a shirt that prevents people from hitting on you. I don't know. Supposed to be clever. I don't know. Um, <laughs> so you would look to see common denominators and then you would search in the search bar to see if people are, um, if it's in high in demand, you know? So that will come in the next video. But right now your purpose is to continue looking for ideas. All right. So um, I'm recording. Anyway, so... Next one, wildflower, another wildflower. Okay, that's interesting. That's a thing. I don't know much about this market, but it's obviously a thing. Okay, so that should be written down. Um, and I'm not a shirt seller, but a whole wildflower collection, I don't know. Yeah, apparently it's a thing. Okay, look, clearly, right? So the person who currently is doing this research is like, okay, I'm selling these funny meme shirts. Nobody cares anymore. It's oversaturated. I need to pivot and do different types of shirts, okay? This is an idea. Now, this person will continue it, but let's do another example so you could see. I am gonna assume you don't know what other types of things you could do with your material type. So you would search in here and see, and by the way, Shirt, wedding clothing. Imagine you were the shirt seller. You're like, huh, wedding clothing or wedding gifts. That could be a gift, right? Because they like to have matching shirts for the bridesmaids, etc. Um, and I thought that top of my head, but that's a thing and you can look it up. So if you go under wedding gifts, can I click on the broad one? No, I cannot. Let's go to bridesmaids. You have to go to each one, it looks like. Okay. And you would browse and browse and try to find and here's the thing, you can look for bestsellers, granted, but things on the first page, typically, give or take, have probably sold a decent amount, give or take, not always, okay? And you're like, you know, I don't find shirts, but people like to put like, blah, blah, bride, blah, blah, bridesmaid. You know what, what if I did a collection of shirts, so when they go on, you know, vacation together, or, you know, when they go out on a bride's getaway, I don't know what you call it. Um, they can have matching shirts. Write that down. You could then do your research. Again, that's a part two, okay? So 
again, the idea is to find your product material and see what else you could create with it. Because that's the easiest thing to do since you already have that material with you. Okay. So let me take a sip of my tea here. So I, well, no. Typically, um, I find that people will sell things that they could do other things with. So if you sell, for example, art prints, okay, that's paper, okay? Now, FYI, there's many, way many different art print types that you could be selling, okay? So right now, if you're in the market of selling baby nursery art prints and wedding anniversary art prints, I don't know, making this up, then you're like, okay, what else is there? You could type in art prints. Okay, this is another way I'm showing you guys an approach. Hello? Oh, it, it, okay, it did load. That was quick. All right. So you type in art prints and hold on a second. Am I recording? Hold on. Let me stop sharing for a second. Oh, yeah, I am recording. <laughs> hold on. I don't want to record this whole thing and I'm not recording. Stop recording. Okay, gotcha. All right. So you type in art prints and I forgot where I was at, but nonetheless, you want to find what other things you could do. And if your brain's like, I, I don't get it, right? Again, I said, look through the search and see what else people are doing. Okay. Part two will show you how to check if it's actually worth going after, but you have to write down the common themes of it and find what the common themes of these bestsellers are what the common themes are of these things on the first page who's this oh this is the the golden girls that's interesting who's looking for that write it down but again if you search for bestseller by the way i'm going to link a video down below in the description that will show you how to automate searching through bestsellers and identifying what the common themes are look at that video okay so I'm now looking at, you know, bestsellers. <clears throat> and by the way, you could also search for popular now. That's also bestsellers, okay? Grumpy frog with towel art print. I guess frogs are popular. I don't know. You have, again, you have to do the research. Um, you have to write down what it is. <clears throat> this one, the bird watcher. Fine art print, okay? This one is overgrown. I don't, oh, that's a Halloween one. That's interesting. I don't know what that's about. Okay, let's do um, popular. Oh, this is cool. This says y'all in a really large poster. That's interesting. Oh, these are nice wildflowers. Guys, wildflowers again. Hmm. Is that a trend? I don't know. What's my hair doing? Okay. Write it down. This is a disco ball. I think some of this is AI generated art. I could obviously be wrong. <clears throat> Excuse me. Dorothy. Oh, look, the Golden Girls for some reason are trending. I have no idea why. I think that's AI art. Okay. Now you did this. You're like, oh, this is too long to do. I, I want to identify what the best things are. Another thing you could do is type art prints or your product type and then do my ABC method. <clears throat> Excuse me. Before you do the ABC method, first, when you click on it, you see what auto populates down here. Look at all these. These are the most popular things in art prints or do art print and then see what happens, okay? These are the most popular things that people are searching for. If you do ABC method, you add A, B, C, D at the end of them, okay? And then you could say, all right, let's see anime because the things that are toward the top are the more popular ones. And within those, you could hit search and then search for bestsellers, okay? So right now, immediately you see the top. See that top row? All bestsellers. Maybe you should get into anime art, right? um art prints if you're an art print seller you're like you know what my 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 art prints for nursery and wedding are oversaturated let me find better things to do now by the way this is not exactly pivoting um because you're, you're you know you're still making art prints but there's only so much things you could do with paper um there are other things you could do with paper granted um <clears throat> and this person who does art prints can look and browse other things and say Okay, which one of these categories, subcategories uses paper? That's another thing. And we're gonna do that together in just a moment. So I can show you how that looks like. But again, you're looking for bestsellers, okay? And saying, okay, what is the common theme here? Another anime. Oh, yeah, I searched for um, anime, duh. Okay, so a lot of bestsellers in this category. The key is if you type in this ABC thing and then 
or click anything that's art print something, art print whatever. If you don't see bestsellers, I would stay away from it. Maybe not. Here's the thing. It doesn't mean that you're only going to do anime art prints. Okay. You're going to do other things clearly. Okay. This is like a huge demand for anime art prints. And some of the things that you're going to do, some of the subcategories, doesn't have to be like crazy selling hundreds a day. Some of my subcategories don't sell as much as other categories. That's fine. Okay. Look at this birds guys. Look at these bestsellers, bestsellers. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? And you might be like, Dahlia, Dah, I decorate my house with bird art prints. I don't know. You don't know everything. That's why this is really important to do this. Okay. Look, bestseller, bestseller. I don't know why <laughs> Dorothy is here now. Bestseller. Wow. Crazy, right? And some of these are printed. Some of these are digital. Who knows? Okay. That's beautiful. Okay. So you get the point, right? So now let's assume that you're like, I have a material. And I don't know what to do with it. I don't want to do art prints anymore. I need, or I do, but I want to look at other things to, just to understand what my options are. Because in part two video, which will be coming out soon, I will show you how to check the demand for all of these to see what's worth going after. And again, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't go after if it's not as high demand. You could, you know, you could spread it out. But if you're an art print seller and you want to pivot, you might decide after doing all this research today that you might you want to do art prints. You might want to do Take your paper and do greeting cards with it. You might want to do, I don't know, something. Um, and this next video will help you determine which one you should get into. Because you should, you can't do all the things. You can't do art prints. You can't do stationery. You can't do greeting cards. You can't do, what else can you do with paper? I don't know, okay? Planners. You can't do, you know, stuff like that. So look, browse. I just hit into toys and entertainment. I'm in books. Can I go into the book category? Okay, that's interesting. So right now we see subcategories, children's books. And again, you could, so here's the thing, just because it's a bestseller, doesn't mean you have to do it. Like there's certain things I don't want to get into. Keep an open mind though, keep an open mind. But there's some things I definitely don't want to create. I don't, you know, and me personally, for the fact that maybe or may not be saturated, we'll do that work in the next video. But I just want you to look and say, what other things can I do? Look, what is this, a bookmark? Writing? This, this exercise I'm showing you, you have to just let it go, but make sure like just freely search and, and browse. You have to write these things down though. I'm not writing it down for you right now, but you have to write these things down. What is all this? Writing desk, writing journal, writing paper. Who's selling writing paper? What is this? Ah, look at that. So maybe you used to do art prints, but maybe now you sell writing paper, but these are printables I'm assuming. Okay. I hope you get the point. Okay. Again, the goal is to say, the goal is to say, I have this material. I want to change my business, but I don't know to what you're browsing and you're searching on Etsy and you do this on Amazon too, by the way, FYI, the same process could be done on Amazon and you're finding other product types you could do. You're writing them down based on what's bestseller. Okay. And then later we could we could just go through them and make sure that they're actually worth getting to. Okay. Second video. I know I keep mentioning that, but I have to keep it focused here. Another thing I want to mention is if you're like Dahlia, I want to change my business model completely. I like what I do, but I don't want to sell a physical product anymore. Okay. You could do digital version of your product or print on demand. There's two different things. Let's do one at a time. So you might say, Dahlia, talk to me. What do you mean about digital? I sell mugs. I can't do digital mugs. That's stupid. Okay, hear me out. That is stupid. But <laughs> type in your product, the general form, mug, and write download and then hit search or write your product type plus you know the word printable um, and things like that. So let's see what happens. What do you think is going to happen? What do you think is going to happen? You're not going to find a mug you could download and drink. We know that. But it's going to look for things that have both keywords in it. So then you could open your eyes and say, what kind of market can I get into? No, I don't want to I don't want to ship a product anymore. I want to do digital only. I want to be on my computer. So let's take a look. Um, somebody's selling the mug mock-ups. And so here's the thing that requires some photography skills, which by the way, you can learn. I'll put a link down below to a fantastic resource I have um, 
for photography. And by the way, this is not just if you want to take mock-ups, this is in general, okay? Um, I'll, I'll write that down so I don't forget. Ow, okay, ow. I'll put that in the link. I just hurt myself. All right, mock-ups. Those are the biggest things that I see. 40, okay. Oh, somebody selling designs that you could uh, download and print on your mugs if you're doing sublimation or heat press or whatever. That's smart. What if you decided that I'm not going to design mugs for myself anymore. I'm going to design in bulk and sell it to people to put on their mugs. Why not? Okay. Write this down. Yeah, that's why I'm looking for best sellers right now. You're looking for concepts of what you could do. Somebody's selling mug templates. I don't know if that's a thing. Well, again, next video we'll show that. Okay. Um, but write it down. Mockups, mockups, funny dad sayings. Okay, I don't know what that is. 50 mug mockups. Yeah, so it's a lot of mockups. Don't stop at the first page, okay? Please. You want to continue. And by the way, oh wow, look at that. The black mug. Wow, that's cool. That's nice. All right. So you continue this process. Yeah, some people are selling um designs. I bet you this person, if I if I'm not mistaken, is probably just like a shop full of designs. Yeah. Look at that. Cool. Is the, are they doing well? They are. Okay. So don't assume that you can't put your product as a digital or downloadable product. You probably can't, right? You can't download a mug, but it'll show you what you know, um, products that combine those two words. So you understand within your market, what you could do. Um, you can also do printables, it's probably going to come up with the same things, just to be honest. Um, uh, mock-ups. Yeah. Designs. So I see don't stop, continue with several pages to make sure you exhausted your possibilities. Okay. But that's an idea. So take your product type and put the word printable or download or digital or digital or whatever next to it. Let's do one more so I can show you. Um, and obviously some of them are easy. Like you're like, oh, I know exactly what to do if I want to turn digital, you know? And of course that requires niche research and stuff like that. But um, what else? Um, what else do you guys sell? That's kind of hard to turn digital because some of them are easy. Like if you type in stationary download, I mean, by the way, that's not going to come up with everything because paper, the stuff I create m can be used for many things. Okay. Um, somebody sells, oh, look, bestseller, bestseller. Somebody sells printable um, writing paper. They're beautiful. So I'm not surprised. I want to get into that a long time ago. It's just, well, printing is not very cost effective. Digital downloads, I guess, are, but they're not making that much money. Again, this person's you know, when you're in a digital download business, like stuff like this, you, you're, you're relying on a lot of product research and a lot of designs. Okay. Anyway. So you have to know what other things are being called. So like, if I'm in that, if I know how to design station, I want to do download, I probably could do planners. I probably could do, you know, recipe cards, downloadable recipe cards. I mean, there's a lot of things people use paper for go to your bookstore and look sometimes, you know, it's not only about searching for it online. Okay. Um, so next, print on demand. I have more to this video, so hang tight, okay? There's other ways to help you pivot your business without using just search on Etsy and Amazon. Print on demand. If you're like, hey, I sell mugs or I sell shirts or whatever, but I don't want to you know, print it anymore. I don't want to do it anymore. But I still have to pivot my business and doing different types of stuff. You could do what I showed you and then decide to use print on demand to fulfill products. However, the reason why I even actually really bring on bring up print on print on demand is because um, if you just don't want to do your product type anymore, if you're like Dahlia, I hate mugs, I hate it. Whatever, I don't know what that means. I hate it. Maybe you hate producing it, but you know, but I hate it. I hate stationery. I hate you know creating wood wood tables. I don't know, making stuff up, right? Whatever you sell. You could decide to go to print on demand. I have a list of print on demand places. I'm going to share it in the description. Let me write that down. OK, 
Okay. A full list for you guys. Okay. I created it. I did my research. Okay. Some of them are printful. You can do research right now, but you, you'll see it down below. Uh, printful, Printify, <clears throat> Guten, Zazzle, Redbubble. Blah, 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 blah. The, the list goes on. And they have quite a bit of different things you could do print on demand for. Meaning you're like, Dahlia, I just want to design a computer that requires that at least. Okay. Essentially doesn't actually require that at all. You could buy designs and, you know, on Etsy, as you can see and put it, but nonetheless, you're like, I want to go digital. I still want to sell product, but I don't want to ship the product. Go print on demand that lets you get to a different product type, the easy way. You can go into a different product type, guys, the harder way, which is saying, oh, I used to sell jewelry. I don't want to sell jewelry anymore. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so get rid of it, like consolidate it. And I want to do print on demand shirts, the print on demand blank, whatever. Then, then easily you could do it. Like you could go to print on demand websites and do it. And then eventually, if you want to start printing it and doing it yourself, that's fine. But this is an easy way to get started. Okay. So. Now, another thing I want to mention, I feel like I need more ideas. I'm not getting too much out of what you're telling me. All right. No problem. You go to Google, you type in your product type. Mug. Um, or maybe like. Must have done a little bit better than that. Hold on. Oh, crate and barrel. Hold on. Coffee mugs. You're essentially trying to find companies, big box companies that sell what you sell. Okay. Target, crate and barrel. I mean, they're kind of, they, they sell everything though. That's kind of hard. Walmart. They kind of sell everything. So that's a little harder, guys. But, oh, discount mugs, maybe. You're trying to look within their subcategories and other things that they have that uses the same material type mugs and say, what else can I get into? Okay, these are kind of stylized mugs though. And if you sell that, that's fine. Discount mugs. Not exactly what I'm looking for. Hold on. I'm trying to. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to search in the shopping section. West Elm, Discount, William, Sonoma. And you have to probably open a few of them, by the way, to find this. Um, some this, some categories will be harder than others. Because again, some of these stores that carry, like the example of mugs, will carry a lot of other home decor. And maybe you don't want to do that. You're looking for other types of mugs that I carry. So here you are, coffee mugs and teacups. You're looking to see what other types of things are trending. These big box stores, for the most part, um, can have done the research and understand what's trending. Pride mug, right? Rainbow hearts, et cetera. Idea, write it down. Um, Monogram mug. This is really cool. It looks like it's engraved or something. It doesn't look like it's flat or anything like that. That's really cool. A bee, honeycomb. Write that down. Here's what you're going to write down because in the next video, I'm going to show you to see if it's worth going after because in this area, you can't see if it's a bestseller or not. Um, ah, zodiac signs. Okay, write it down. Some, some place, the child. Ah, Star Wars, but Remember, I'm not telling you to do anything. You have to do due diligence to see if you're allowed to. Look, this honeycomb mug is a bestseller. It does show bestseller here, okay? So you're going to your big box competitors because they did the research. So I'm going to do stationary, okay? Hold on, I'm trying to see my notes here so I don't forget anything. Okay, so there's quite a bit. Right. If I'm selling stationary, I'm like, okay, I'm done with stationary. There, it's like it's so saturated, whatever. Oh, I probably put personalized stationary to be honest, because stationary is a general phrase. Let me take those out. Hold on, let me cross out all these. Okay. Um, that's quite a bit. So I'm just gonna open two really quick. I'm trying to identify what else I could do. Okay. So you look at their ah, graduation. I could do invitations for graduation. Okay. Baby and announcements, right? So this christening, 
right? Look, party supplies, banners. I mean, I'm not gonna get into banners, but you get the point, right? It helps you identify what other types of things you could do with paper. Typically stationary companies do things with paper. Typically, sometimes they do have gifts. Yes, gifts, you see that? Like mugs and stuff like that. But looking through big, spot, big box competitors can help with that. Let me try one more thing before I end this video. I really hope, this, guys, this gives you um, some insight in how to pivot your business the easiest way. Finding other products that use your material type, okay? Browse is probably going to help you a little bit more if you're stuck and you don't know exactly how to, like, um, do other things with mugs or shirts or whatever, um, or simply typing in mug or shirts. Um, however, if you sell a product that has a material base, like paper, um, stuff like that, you have to use your noggin to say, okay, what other products use paper? Google it. What other products use paper? Okay. Use AI. What other products that are being sold uses paper? Okay. Boom. Okay. So, um, let me check one thing. So let's say if I wanted to, let's say if I have, I sell paper related products. Hold on. I think. And if I want to get into selling t-shirts, oh. I don't know. I'm trying to see if, oh, what the, I'm trying to see if I type in what I sell and the, and the product I may want to pivot in. I want to see if that will give me anything or how about let's do stationary. Not really. Okay. And it may work for something else. I'll try, try something out. But that, that did not work. One last thing I want to show you. Sorry, I just thought of it. Is if you are like, Dahlia, I don't want to sell my product anymore. I don't want to do print on demand. I don't want to do digital. I want a completely different product. That's a stretch. That's a stretch. I suppose there might be some people watching this that want that. Fair. Let me show you. Um, You have to identify markets that first of all that you're willing to do okay so you could do browse again you do this on amazon as well you have to browse and say what am i willing to get into for example i'm not willing to do woodwork i'm not willing to create large pieces of wood i like i'm not and what if like you're like i suck at painting i'm not going to do like art like i'm not going to do physical art right so you have to know what you hate what you love or what you're okay with and then search browse and say okay Imagine right now I'm a stationary market. I'm like, I don't want to do any with paper anymore. I'm done with it. I don't want to do print on demand. I love the idea of Dahlia, but no, thank you. And I don't want to do digital. Okay. Okay. So then you say to yourself, all right, what can I do? I'll teach you how to identify what's great within that niche. Women's clothing. You're like, I want to do something within women's clothing. I want to sell clothing. Okay. It's really simple, guys. It's really simple. You look in categories. Okay. And write things down that are best sellers. We're going to do research later. Okay, see bestseller? Custom shirts. Bestseller. This is, I don't think this is even handmade. <laughs> okay, so let's go to the next page. And this is going to, where is it? This is going to take a while, okay? You're trying to find, if you're looking for a general category, there's a lot of search results. There's going to be a lot of pages full of bestsellers, okay? Where is it? I can't barely see it, guys. Oh, there it is. It doesn't drag down the page, I think, because I'm recording. It's all good. T-shirts that say cool sayings on it. What is this? Distressed oversized flannel shirt? Um, Hello, is that even... bestseller okay i don't know what was up with this page um you keep going until you see things you can identify and write down you can do also popular now okay bestseller it is not many bestsellers here in this general category let's let's uh scoot down a bit right so if you're like oh dance maybe yoga maybe we'll get into yoga clothing okay Again, same idea. Search for bestseller. But are people actually making these? I don't know. That's not me for me to judge. Okay. Basic crop top. Okay. I don't know. You're writing this down. You're just writing down the bestsellers. 
and seeing what's worth getting into. But if you're like, no, I can't find them, what should I do? Type in yoga space. See how much things come up, okay? Let's do this. I mean, I think three words is fine. Don't do max more than three words. Uh, two words is absolutely okay as well. And again, you're searching for the word bestseller. Did damn shirt again. I don't know what's going on with this category, to be honest. Probably a bad example to show you guys. I don't try to do the work I'm going to show you prior. I'd like to just do it with you. Feels more authentic that way. This is a little concerning. Um, okay, let's not do yoga shirt. Let's do yoga pants. So pants is the first thing that comes up. What about yoga mats? Maybe you want to get into mats. That's cool, right? So again, you just decide or browse through things that you want to do. And you're writing down within that, right? Because you can't just sell mats. You can't just sell yoga shirts. Like you have to understand what types. Write them down similar to the way I showed you, finding bestsellers, et cetera, browsing through, searching through. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to identify if it's worth going after, okay? Script style, yoga mat, namaste, Lauren. Okay, that's cool. Um, So personalized name, fun yoga sayings. You know, you probably could Google that. Um, this is a yoga bad mat. Some of these are questionable if they're, <laughs> if they are, um, what is it called? Handmade. All right, let's do, okay, so we have bestseller yoga pants. Some of these are just basic. This might be made. I don't know. Okay. That's hideous, but that's, that's my, that's, I, that's not for me. Oh, that's cool. Okay. It's really yoga life. And I guess I assumed I would see things that are just personalized. Not everybody does that, obviously. So people do actually make clothing. So I take that back. Um, look, black harem pants. I don't know how to say that. I should know how to say that. Harem pants, that's another thing. So write that down. Um, and you're identifying the of flare bell bottom, write that down. Okay. So again, I'm just giving you an example. You have to do this with your own thing. Okay. Um, and you're going to have, after this exercise, you're going to have a list, whether written down or typed out a list of, you know, ideas within a product niche that you wanted to pivot to, whether you're using the same material or whether you're not, even if you're doing print on demand, you still want to do what I just did right now. You're like, okay, I decided to go and print on demand. I'm going to do shirts on print on demand. You still have to do your research to see what is best selling, okay? So you understand what product types to get into, especially if you're not used to that product type, okay? Um, you you have to start somewhere. And if you're like, I'm not in that market, you need to know what type of categories, subcategories you need. Again, don't forget to look at your big box competitors. That will help you as well. You're writing all this down and join me in the next video where I'm going to show you how to take all those things that you wrote down to see what's worth going after. And by the way, yes, many, many of them can be worth going after, um, but you definitely need quite a bit of them, subcategories in your shop that actually have a decent demand and low saturation because you don't want to have a whole bunch of losers in your shop, right? You have to have some that are average, some that are really high, some that are some low. It just happens. You have to mix it up. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you in the next one, part two where I will show you how to test those ideas and see if people are searching for it because that's the next part, demand. You have to know if you create something that people are actually searching for, okay? Hope you enjoy. Make sure you share this video, like, comment. Thank you very much. Bye.